Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I like to discuss my thoughts as usual when Parliament is in session on today's PMQs. Although as Sunak is out of the country again, it's Deputy Prime Minister's questions with the hapless Oliver Dowden, where both Labour and the SNP decided to take the government to task over the latest news of eye-watering waste. Another £21 billion disappearing into smoke this time. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So this was the second PMQs Oliver Dowden has deputised for in his relatively short career so far as Deputy PM. I have to say, not really enjoying the spectacle. He is entertaining. I'm not really sure politics is supposed to be entertaining. Deputy PMQs, they're always going to be less interesting than the real thing because the deputy is not the one giving a steer on government policy. The whole point of PMQs is for MPs to ask the Prime Minister, the person who steers government policy, questions about government policy. You know, the Deputy Prime Minister, yes, they're supposed to be up to speed with it, but they don't ultimately decide, so it always loses something. Um, but, you know... <laughs> When you've got someone like uh, Oliver Dowden in charge, it just it just becomes a mess. Mind you, as I say, it wasn't short of entertainment. And Rayner was straight in by noting that in her very first question, in the last Tory manifesto, they promised to do away with judicial review. She asked how that was going, to some expected laughter, of course. This is referring to the fact that the government have initiated a judicial review in order to block its own public inquiry. It's a bit like, you know, when you heard about Brexiteers going, oh, we, we shouldn't have the European courts, we shouldn't have the European courts, and then you find out they're using the European courts because something's happened they don't like, and they're using the European courts to try and, you know, get justice for themselves. Very similar. Oh, we don't like judicial reviews. Oh no, this inquiry we started, what's some information? Judicial review, immediate judicial review. Dowden tried to claim that the government was supporting the COVID inquiry, though taking your own inquiry to court to stop it accessing the documents it needs seems like a funny way of showing it. He also said that Wales, which has a Labour government, is not carrying out an inquiry. Now, this is a fair point. The Welsh government should also be carrying out an inquiry. But that decision has no bearing on the fact that the Tory government in Westminster is seeking only to have a sanitised whitewash rather than the proper public inquiry that we are expecting. Rayner then asked Dowden if the working people that he claims to be knowledgeable about will thank him for the waste of public money in pursuing this case. You know, as she began to build her main theme of questions, which was essentially about the Tories wasting taxpayer money. Dowden tried to defend it with the usual government line of, oh, we've got the rights to make sure that the unambiguously irrelevant information isn't used. But the way this is achieved is to hand it to the inquiry and let them decide. If it's unambiguously irrelevant, they won't bother with it and they won't make it public. That's how these inquiries work. The former senior judge who is leading the inquiry is best placed to judge the usefulness of the information, not government lawyers who are under the watchful eye of government ministers. Yeah, and, and, you know, these shifty politicians worried about their dubious reputations. Not necessarily the most, the people most trusted to make those decisions. Dowden then tried to fire back in his usual playground whataboutery by saying, oh, and Starmer bought two pairs of headphones. It's like, yeah. And, and she put them on expenses. Well, she put one of them on expenses. She bought the second pair. But at least she got something for that. What are we going to get from the government spending way more on this judicial review? I mean, I'll get a video out of it. The Guardian will get a front page out of it. But what will the bulk of the taxpaying public get out of it? The next question on Tory waste ramped it up a bit more and asked about the potential for the million quid bill for Boris Johnson's rather lavish taste in lawyers. Dowden didn't even pretend to answer this one, just suggesting that Rayner and Starmer aren't getting on. Now, I actually genuinely don't know what that's supposed to be about. There have been reports in the past of friction, although they've both acted in the interest of the party and not let anything come out in public. But there hasn't been anything for a while. I think Dowden was just fishing here. I think... If I'm honest, if the public were asked to name two senior MPs, particularly within the same party, who have a fractious relationship, I don't think Starmer and Rayner would be the names they would pick. 
I can think of a very obvious strained intra-party relationship that the public would be much more likely to mention. Answers on a postcard or, you know, in the comments below. Rayner then took a brief break from the taxpayer waste and asked why the government seems to have abandoned their plans for a register of missing children. Oh, we haven't abandoned them, said Jack Dowden. We haven't abandoned them, actually. We've just not done anything about it. We're still discussing it, you see. I mean, what's to discuss? I mean, there are policies that are very complicated to implement. There are genuinely, you know, you can have a policy on something. How you actually implement it can be very complex. Yes, but is a register of children that schools have lost contact with one of them? Beyond making sure the detailed data is secure, I can't really think of much that needs discussing with it. Sounds to me like what the government are actually discussing is whether or not they want the public to find out just how many children they've lost. After that, Rayner... Uh, turned it back onto taxpayer waste and asked about the big one, the big news. Yesterday, I think it was. The Public Accounts Committee have warned that the levels of fraud and error which government departments are contending with is way greater than before the pandemic. Four times greater. Now, another way of putting it would be to say that there's more fraud, way more fraud and error occurring since Rishi Sunak became Chancellor. I wonder which event is more to blame. See, they talk about the pandemic. Maybe, it may be, you know, that it is the pandemic. But given that it happened at the same time as Rishi Sunak became Chancellor, I don't know, which one's more, uh, which one's the major factor? But Rayner was asking specifically about this £21 billion pounds worth of fraud that took place in the two years following the pandemic, which, as I say, was a fourfold increase in the level of fraud on the two years before Sunak became Chancellor, when it was about £5 billion, or before the pandemic, as the committee more charitably puts it. Dowden said the government were trying to recover the money, which is not entirely true, by the way. A little bit of a fib. They are chasing some fraud. They're essentially chasing the smaller levels of uh, fraud, like benefit fraud. They're not chasing anything that might net some Tory donors and, God forbid, the Prime Minister's wife. He also tried to ape one of the claims in a Tory rag this week. I actually forget which one it was. It'd be the Mail or the Express. I think it was the Mail. Which said, uh, oh, Labour's Green Investment Fund would add £1,000 to people's mortgages. Naturally a nonsense claim, but I'm not sure if it was brave or stupid of Dowden to be talking about increasing mortgage payments given what the Tories have been doing this past year. In fact, I may need to talk about that in a separate video later this week. But for a final question, Rayner pointed to the fact that the Public Accounts Committee said not only has there been this £21 billion worth of fraud in that two-year period, which is four times as much as the previous period, uh, but more could be wasted because ministers seem to be in denial about the problems. Yeah, that's because although they like to focus on benefit fraud, as I say, the really big stuff involves their mates. Then on to the SNP. Myrie Black, deputy uh, leader for the SNP in Westminster, began with interest rates, one of the highest in the G20, she said. And she asked if it's a result of the government trashing the economy only slightly more slowly than Liz trusted. And being honest, I've made this point in a video. I think Labour should use this line. I really think they should have it. I don't know why they don't make more of a comparison between the guilt yields now and when Truss was in charge, because they're very similar. To my mind, it does two things. First, you're comparing Rishi Sunak to Liz Truss. Now, that's never a favourable comparison as far as the public are concerned. But second... You then invite Truss and her loony brigade to fire back, because they will, by demanding that her approach was right. Because the more people poke at Truss, the more her allies in the media will feel the need to defend her. This will not reflect well on the Tories. I cannot imagine that many voters, especially those with mortgages, will seriously consider voting Tory if they're aware that a lot of MPs would still like to pursue Truss's economic policies. At the moment, they may think, well, she's gone now, that's fine, they got rid of the loot. They shouldn't have put her in place, but they did, and they've got rid of her, fine. If they knew just how many Tory MPs only got rid of her because she was killing them in the polls, but that actually they wanted her economic policies. I would hammer the comparison all day long when talking about the economy. But in response, Dowden talked about the revised growth forecast being more positive for the UK. This would be the forecast that the Conservatives said was rubbish when they didn't like it. They only like forecasts when it says what they want it to say. 
Not that the potential for a slightly above 0% increase in GDP is going to help people deal with mortgage payments, which are now hundreds of pounds more than last year. Black then brought up the £21 billion worth of waste and she added on as a bonus the £6 billion spent on detaining asylum seekers and asked if the PM's view from his helicopter is so skewed that he thinks that's value for money. Dowden couldn't be bothered to answer that question either. Uh, not so much as a big stop the boats rant. Not sure whether I should be pleased at that, that he's got some sense of honour or disappointed that he's so useless. But just to finish off, see, when it comes to questions directed specifically at Dowden, I think I'm going to give the prize to Gavin Newland, also of the SNP. He said that Dowden likes to call himself Mr. Normal. You know, he went to a state, you know, in a party full of um, largely privately educated people with that privately educated privileged mindset. You always get a few Tories that like to, oh, I can be your bridge with the normal people, you see. You don't understand them. You went to Eton. I'm the bridge. You know, just like the UK used to be the bridge into the single market. Not anymore. So, Dowden calls himself Mr. Normal and, and uh, Mr. Newland says, you know, he likes to call himself Mr. Normal. But he charged £13,000 to businesses for 20 hours work or £670 per hour. And he asked if Mr. Normal thinks he's worth 65 times a band two nurse. At which point Dowden said he didn't understand the question. Okay, I thought it was fairly simple. So whatever he charged those businesses for at £670 an hour, I hope it wasn't anything which required comprehension skills or that have been robbed. But there we are. Hopefully we can persuade Rishi Sunak to visit the UK next week so that we can dispense with another one of these with Dowden, whose main purpose appears to be, as Deputy Prime Minister, making Sunak look good by comparison. Until then, those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.